Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial where we're going to create a night vision effect. I have open on screen the image we're going to be working on throughout this project and to show you the effect we're after I'll switch out to another image which is a finished version so that's what we're aiming to create before the end of this tutorial. Go ahead and open up the project file that comes along with this video if you want to follow along. You'll also need to be a member of the site to access that if that's the way you want to go. For anybody just wanting to follow along then our first objective is to turn the image black and white. To do that I'll come up here to the enhance menu here in Photoshop Elements and I could go to the adjust color and then remove color option but that doesn't give me the black and white effect I'm after although it does get the job done if you want to go that way. If you're using the full version of Photoshop then you may want to look for the desaturate command which does exactly the same job under the adjustments menu. For this project though I'm going to remain in the enhance menu and select convert to black and white and that will open up this big dialog box but I'm just going to go ahead and select the vivid landscape option and then I'll hit OK. Now you're probably thinking that that option has increased the noise and roughness of the image and you'd be right but in this example that's the effect we're after because a night vision camera isn't going to be ultra clear and vivid in fact we'll add some more noise of our own later on in the video. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'll do that by coming up to the layer menu selecting the new option and then choosing the layer option and that's going to give me a chance to name the layer and so we'll give it the name of green and then we'll hit OK. Now we're going to change the color of our foreground and background swatches so come over here to the bottom of the toolbox and click on the foreground swatch and I want you to enter the following values so click into red and change that to 18 then change the green to 91 and finally blue to 25. Alright that's our work done here click OK and then click on the background swatch to open up the color picker that changes the background color values and this time I want you to change the values to 103 for red 202 for green and 101 for blue and then once again hit the OK button. Now it's time to grab the gradient tool which you can do by activating it in the toolbox or pressing the letter G on the keyboard. Once you have it come up to the options bar and first of all make sure you click the gradient pattern and ensure you have this first option active. Should read foreground to background if you hover the cursor over it. Go ahead and give it a click. Then make sure you have this radial gradient option active. Second one from the left in this version of Photoshop Elements. And then finally, because we want to drag out to the darker side of the gradient, we'll need this reverse option on. Okay, now all that's left to do is to come down to the image, click and drag the cursor from the center of the image to about here, so not quite all the way to the border, and then release. There's our night vision effect. Now to blend it, I'm going to come over to the layers panel and change the blending mode from normal to multiply and we get that effect right there. Next I'm going to duplicate the green layer so make sure it's selected and then hit the keyboard shortcut Control or command J then double click on the layer name and call it black. Now we need to turn it black and white so I'll come back up to the enhance menu and then choose adjust color and you remember that command I told you I wasn't going to use earlier well that was earlier in this job it's going to do us proud so select the remove color option and the layer thumbnail will switch to a black and white gradient instead of a dark to lighter green one the appearance of the image will also change you'll notice now we're going to control the way this layer looks by using the levels command so make sure the black layer is active and we can use the keyboard shortcut Control or Command L to invoke the levels command and you can see that we've got a really interesting histogram that's basically just 
a visual representation of the luminance data in the image. The great thing is we can use these slider bars to push the luminance information around. So grab the slider on the right hand side first of all and bring that inwards to lighten up the centre of the image. We can also use the slider to brighten up the outer regions of the image, although I'm going to leave that one alone, and the centre one to smooth out the transitions between the darks and lights. Feel free to go ahead with your own values, but if you do want to follow along, I'm going to leave the black point set to zero. I'll have the gamma value, which is this center one right here, set to 1.65. And then finally, the white point set to 87. And once I'm happy with it, I'll click OK. Now, the great thing about doing it this way is that if we don't like what we're seeing, we can go back in and add additional instances of the levels command. So I may think that right now that the black outer region isn't dark enough. So I'll hit Control or Command L to open up the levels command once again and we'll see all of our values reset because the histogram is now focused on the current image post modifications that we made last time. And I'll change the black point this time to one point sorry not 1.67 but 167 so quite a drastic change then to smooth away the two areas I'll change the middle slider to 1.5 and I'm liking this a lot better so I'll hit OK to accept those changes and by the way where I'm getting those values from that I just uh, entered into the layers dialog box it's just a matter of try it and see really there's no exact values that you can just input into that dialog box for every image that you are working on. So sometimes you just have to play around a little bit until you find the actual value that you want to go with. And before I started recording this tutorial, I did that. I played around with those sliders until I got something that I liked. And I then used the values as you just seen me do. Now if you want to make this image more reminiscent of an old low quality night vision picture, we can add some more noise by first of all activating the image because that's the layer we want to add the noise to. Then by coming up to the filter menu and selecting the noise option and then choosing to add noise. Now go ahead and set the amount value to something like 4. Make sure the distribution is set to uniform and that monochromatic is turned on and then hit OK. So if you can see on the video presentation at home, you may not be able to see because of the quality of the video that we output here at freefellowshop.com. Although it's very good, it doesn't always capture every last grain of noise that an image actually has. So if you can see that noise, then this is before we added the noise filter. So slightly smoother. And here is what we get once we've added the noise much more grainy and rough, exactly what we want to find in this project. Now you may also want to blur your image slightly. I'm not going to because I think this one is blurred enough already, but should you want to go ahead and blur your image, then come up to the filter menu once again and select blur, and then go for this Gaussian blur option. And you can then control the amount of blur you're adding by adjusting this little slider bar now I'm not going to add any of this myself, as I said before, but if you wanted to, then I'd recommend adding it before you add the noise. Otherwise, you're just going to be blurring away the noise that you've already added, and you're just going to get a conflict of the two filters. So I'll cancel out of here. If you want to add the blurring, then hit Control or Command Z to get rid of the noise, and then add the blur, then come back and add the noise. That's the best way of working, but for this image, this is exactly what I'm after, so I am not going to add any blurring at all. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is to turn on some pre-prepared layers. So first of all, I'll turn on the two text layers to give us some kind of aircraft camera data. You can add whatever you want by simply using the text tool here inside Photoshop Elements. So just come over to the toolbox, activate the type tool, and then click wherever in the image you want to add the text. If you want to match the font and colour I've gone for, then double click one of the text layers and then come up to the options bar, 
So the font is called Digital 7, and it's very unlikely, by the way, that you're going to have this particular font on your system, but you can get it free of charge at the website 1001fonts.com, and I'll try and make a link available for that page on the freefellowshop.com website so you can check it out if you want to do that. Next we have the type size set at 9 points, but that will depend on the size of image you're working with. One other thing is the colour, so I'll click the colour swatch to see what the actual colour of the image is, and it's a red, green and blue value of 177 in each channel. So I'll cancel out of there once we've got all that information. Next thing to do is activate this layer called Lines, and this will give us some scan lines across the image to reinforce the effect. Now I'm not going to show you how to make these, but if you are interested, I've already got a tutorial on the site called Creating TV Scan Lines, and I'll make sure there's a link to it on this page. If you want to check it out and you can't find the link, then just do a search on the freephotoshop.com website for TV Scan Lines. If you go ahead and create them yourself, just know that I haven't blended them in in this instance, as I do show you how to do in the tutorial, but I have dropped the opacity to 10%. And that's that. Our completed night vision effect, thanks to Photoshop Elements and a little user creativity. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.